All right, let's dive back into the automation phase of this mix. And once again, I'll pull up my notes here where I took note of the automation moves that I made uh, off camera. And so these five here, these are the moves that we've already talked about. And now we're going to pick it up right here and then I'll breeze through or I'll try to breeze through these fairly quickly. Um, I'm not I'm going to try not to take up too much of your time going through these very individual moves that I made, because at some point this is just for this song in particular. But I do want you to feel very educated and feel like your your brain is starting to make sense of this whole thing that we call not only mixing, but specifically automation. So the first thing now in this video, as we continue on in this automation journey is this electric bends to volume. So that is the track here under this electrics folder. So I automated, okay, I automated this one. Yeah, so we've already talked about this. We duplicated this electric track, which sounds like this. So we duplicated that and then we ran it through some crazy effects using RC20. And then what I did is I blended in this second track, this distorted version with the original. And as you can see here, this is the volume, autom the volume automation that I did on this track. And so it sounds like this together. Notice how at the end there, I'm raising the volume of that. And that's why it sustains so nicely in that little break and gap before we hit verse two. It's really cool. So the way that I did this is here's just a quick tip when it comes to volume automation. I generally don't like to automate the volume faders. And the reason for that is because let me show you why I don't like to do this. So if I were to automate the volume fader here, then let's say that I would make some moves and I'd be like, you know, do this or whatever. Okay, fair enough. Now it's reading that automation. The problem is if I decide that this electric bends two track here isn't quite loud enough in the mix overall, and I go to turn it up, I'm like, okay, now it's louder. The problem is, do you notice how it immediately went back down to whatever this automation lane was? See? So as you can see, you're not actually going to affect the volume or at least not the overall volume if there is already automation that this track is or that is being read by this track as you're playing it because of the automation that was written in. So let's undo all of that. So now you might be asking, OK, if you don't do volume automation using a fader, then how do you do volume automation? Well, every DAW that I know of has plenty of plugins, you could use any plugin that has the ability to automate a gain or a volume knob. So in this case here in Studio One, I just grabbed the Mix Tool plugin and then I am automating the gain. So it's, it's the exact same thing. It's just that now that I'm automating this parameter, which is just the gain of whatever track this plugin is on, we can then still do the the umbrella adjustments using this fader and it's not going to lock back into some weird automation like it did before. So this is a really good, I think, middle ground. And I just tend to stay away from trying to automate the faders. That way I always just know that these faders are free. And when I actually adjust them, they're not going to lock back into some type of automation. So I clicked here, came up here to the automation, just did the normal thing. And then I, rode this automation in using a fader. And again, this is all by feel. This volume is all over the place. This is not some exact science. I am just playing it by feel. I'm playing it by ear. It's think of yourself as somebody who is doing live sound as the song is playing and all of a sudden there's this electric guitar on the right side of the stage that is coming in and you realize, oh, it's not loud enough. Let me turn it up live in the moment. That is what I'm doing here. This Don't try to be perfectionistic about this. Just uh, ride it in. Uh. It 
and just really play it by feel. This approach to automation is, is going to add so much life to your tracks, and it's so much better than trying to approach it in this mathematical way of, you know, minus 3 dB, and then here my up plus 1. Instead, you just don't even look at the numbers. You come in here, and when you write in this automation, you just play it by feel. And you can do it as many times as you need to. You can undo the automation and restart it until you get it to where it feels right to you. Okay, so that is what it did there. Now there's one thing, and also as you can see here at the end of the song, I also just did some crazy. I'm just writing in that volume automation. Now there's one thing that I actually think I might want to do, and that is I think I want to turn down the dry, or not the, I guess it's not dry, but it's this track. The clean track, I think I'm going to turn that down by a couple dB. And I think I just want more of this distorted track overall. I think it'll sound better. So let's turn this up. Something like that. See what that sounds like. Right? So if we come out of here. I love that. That is really cool. And let's see how it sounds over here. Yeah, it sounds fine. We kind of have a wall of sound there at the end, so it's not like it has to be super present or up front. It's just a piece of the puzzle there at the end. So I think we are good there. So let's move on from that one. And the next automation move we're going to talk about here is the key sound with clip gain automation that I did. So let's come over here to our keys folder. And I think, okay, so I think what I meant by that is I just turned down the volume on the clip gain level here. So this is another way that you can turn down the volume. I sometimes like to turn down the, the volume instead of using the fader to turn down the volume or turn up the volume, I'll use the clip itself because in most dolls you have the ability to take the clip itself and do something like that, right? So this is adjusting the gain before it even hits the fader. So we'll undo that. Colors of gold. And this is another one of those moves that isn't exactly an automation move. It was just a move that I made, apparently. Um, but what does it say? Clip gain automation. Because can you even automate that? I don't think you can automate the clip gain. So I'm not even sure what I was doing uh, there. But uh, <laughs> that's fine. Um, okay, so I'll just move on from that. I honestly confused myself there. So um, the next one is doubler plugin send on lead vocal. So we'll come over here to this lead vocal. So there was apparently a doubler that I sent this vocal to. So let's see what we have here. Okay, so for the final chorus, I just wanted a bit more of a processed and wider sound on that lead vocal. So I'm automating this doubler plugin to only come in during that final chorus. And it actually might be this, looks like it's the chorus plugin instead of a doubler. Um, okay, but it's, oh, it's neither. Oh, so I was experimenting. That's interesting. So I'm going to rename this. This is often how this stuff goes. Is this actually just saturation? I remember now. I experimented with using a doubler or a chorus to send this vocal through to make this last part bigger, but it ended up just making it sound too unnatural and weird, and it wasn't actually adding value to this song. And so I muted the chorus and the EQ that I had here, and I just threw a saturation knob just out of experiment, just in an experimentative mode. <laughs> And I, so, here. I just wait, just wait. so this is basically a saturated reverb sound that we are blending in 
here at the end of the song. So the mix is at 100% on the reverb, which means we're taking this saturated signal here. Now, another thing I did here, as you can see, is I took this return track and I sent this signal through some slap delay, which we already have over here. And that is adding some extra life to that sound as well. So this is all just, I try one thing, it doesn't really work. So I was like, oh, maybe I should use a saturation instead to add some life there. And then that worked. And then, and then I was like, okay, maybe I should drench that saturation in some reverb to add some more ambience and space to it. And then once that was done, I was like, oh, maybe I could use an effect that already exists in this mix and send that signal that we have, that saturated reverb, and send that to the slap delay. And that sounded good to me. So this is, all of this is experimentation. So don't get overwhelmed with the moves I'm, make, I'm making, because this is the type of thing that you are going to get really good at if you just slowly get better every single day at these sorts of things with music production and mixing. It just takes time. So, you know, if you're just starting out or if you are only a couple years in, I wasn't doing these types of advanced moves a couple years in either. So don't beat yourself up. Just take it slow and really try to learn these small skills and master the small skills. And then the more you do that, the more you realize, oh, wow, I can actually make a pretty complex production or a complex mix. And it's a great skill to have once you reach that place. But be patient with yourself in the meantime. Okay, so we have that. Now let's move on to, I did a high cut EQ on the room reverb channel. So that was simply, the room reverb is here. So what I was, I think what I was hearing was too much high frequencies, too much almost harshness with that room reverb signal. So let's hear what, what else. But I like to think we'd make it if we tried again. I wish you were here again. Yeah, we're not doing a crazy amount. I think I just made this this little cut up here on this room reverb channel to soften those those high frequencies on the room reverb, but it's not quite as much as I thought it was going to be when you consider that I added this to the list. So I'm just gonna leave that. There's not really that much to talk about there. So the next thing we wanna talk about now is the vocal volume automation. Now automation on the vocal is critically important because the lead vocal specifically is the track that your listener is going to hear from start to finish. So your lead vocal has to be in a good place from start to finish in order for the mix to be a good mix. And now, this isn't as simple as just using compression because we've already used compression, right? And we've already used things like saturation and reverb and all of these other effects that can give the vocal a sense of balance, right? The problem is that balance is still somewhat in isolation. What I mean by that is we also need to find balance relative to the rest of the instrumentation because the rest of the instrumentation is not stagnant. It's always moving. The dynamics are always changing. Sometimes the other tracks are not as loud. Sometimes they're louder. Sometimes there's less tracks. And then in the final chorus, like we have here, there's more tracks. And so we need to find the right pocket for the lead vocal to sit in relative to everything else at every or at any given time throughout the entire song. And that is the challenge of automating the volume of the lead vocal. So I'll walk you through what I did with that. And once again, I didn't automate the volume fader. I'm just not a fan of that. I instead used the mix tool plugin and automated the gain here. And then that created an automation lane, which we have here. And it isn't crazy. Now, some songs will require more um, extreme automation on the lead vocal. Some songs you will hardly need any at all. The biggest thing to keep in mind is you want to really focus on on the energy of the vocal as you're playing back, as you're trying to make these types of automation decisions when it comes to the vocal specifically and the volume of it. It's like, okay, you hit play. 
And you want to listen for, especially in transition periods where you're moving, say, from perhaps a verse to a chorus, you want to ask yourself, does the energy stay in a good place? Or do I feel like the vocal loses a step? Is it now buried a little bit in the mix relative to what it was in the verse? So if the verse is here, notice how it was at zero. So I just did a 1 dB boost in the chorus here. And then I just made that stay throughout the entirety of chorus one here. So something as small as just 1 dB actually can make quite a big difference with a track like this, like a vocal, between the different sections. So again, the gain here is at zero in the verse, and then it jumps up to just a 1 dB boost here in the chorus, and it helps the chorus to just give it a slight... It's not that we're actually giving it that much lift, it's just that we are now, we are um, compensating, and we are adding in to try to reintroduce balance because the the ground on which we are building this song has shifted. It's not the same anymore because there are more things happening and there are more tracks playing. And so therefore the gain or the volume of this lead vocal needs to change relative to what is happening with everything else again. So one dB boost in the chorus and then coming out of the chorus, it comes back down to zero. And then another thing you want to watch out for when you're doing volume automation is listen for, are there any words or phrases in the vocal performance that just kind of get lost that maybe for whatever reason, the compression that you added didn't quite bring it to the place that you thought, or maybe there's just some other weird things happening for whatever reason, again, that it's just not popping through the mix enough for just one word or a couple words or a phrase. So notice here. These pictures on my phone, them all. So these pictures, I kind of felt that. These pictures on my phone, them all. And then deleted them as well, or deleted them, those two words, also felt like they were a bit buried. So notice how I made a 2 dB boost here, and then I brought it back down to 1, and then here another 2 dB boost. And then here, for the rest of verse 2, I think I, I am at a 1 dB boost throughout. And then again, we're making these subtle shifts, these subtle changes to maintain a sense of balance between the vocal and the rest of the tracks. So when all the other instrumentation drops out here, and it's just the piano and the bass, I, like I brought the vocal back down to zero. It was at one dB over here, I brought it back down to zero. We're not doing crazy shifts here, but those one dB shifts on something like a lead vocal that is very upfront in the mix, that is very heard, actually does make quite a large difference. If we tried again. And then I bring it back to 1 dB plus. Wish you it stays that way. And then here I went minus one. So the difference between plus one and minus one is 2 dB of a difference there. Wish that I could wish. And that's just because when everything drops out, Whoa, I If, if I were to keep this vocal super loud, like this, if if I were to maintain it in a way like that, the vocal would sound almost too much in your face. And that's not a natural uh, mix there for that tiny section of the song because we are we're losing a sense of balance because again, everything is about adjusting the volume and maintaining balance relative to the rest of the song. So. Okay, 
Okay, okay. Now I need to mention something here about this final course because you might be asking why isn't the volume automation turned up louder for the final course on this lead vocal? Because it's really big. There's way more things happening here and it and everything else is louder. So why isn't the lead vocal louder? Well, it is. It's just not louder from this, from the volume automation. See here, it's the same. It's plus one, which is what we did in the previous courses. The difference is, remember what we did just previously? We sent the lead vocal to that saturated reverb, and then that effect only comes in during this final course. So that in of itself is adding a good amount of volume to this lead vocal sound. I think I'm gonna just raise that by just over a dB there on that saturated reverb effect. And I think that sounds pretty good just to give it slightly more volume. And then that that is it when it comes to the volume automation on the vocal. Again, it's a pretty subtle thing. We didn't do anything crazy. Um, you just wanna really lean into it. You wanna really pay attention to how does it feel, especially in the transitions between the verses and the choruses? Do you need to turn the vocal up or turn it back down? What what does the energy feel like? What does the balance feel like relative to everything else? And then again, another thing to watch out for is, are there individual words or phrases that just for whatever reason are too loud? They just pop through the mix and then cut through too harshly, or they just get lost for a second. And then you want to use volume automation to keep everything in a good balance. And volume automation is one of those things, it just takes time. So don't try to feel like you have to have the perfect automation. And this is by no means the perfect automation either. It's just, I think it's good enough. So try to get really good at it, but this is gonna take some ear training. It's gonna take repetition to really be able to make um, masterful automation moves, especially on the lead vocal. So be patient with yourself. This is going to take time to perfect. So we got the vocal volume automation there, just a few more to go. So another thing I did is I eased off the sidechain compression on the Lana reverb. So initially on this Lana reverb here, but I, wish that I, could wish you I had a sidechain compressor on it, right? And we still do. And I actually felt like it was ducking the reverb in too much of an unnatural way and it was affecting the quality of the track overall and especially the vocal. And so I just eased off the sidechain so that it's still compressing the reverb signal whenever that dry vocal is performing and the lead vocal is singing. See, we're sidechaining this to that lead vocal, right? That, And then this compressor is responding to whenever the lead vocal is singing and it is ducking this reverb. It's just not as much as it was previously, just so I ended up with a bit more of a natural sound there. All right, now the next thing we have here is pan adjustments between Electric Benz 2 and Vocal O's track. So let's see what we did here on this Electric Benz 2 track. Okay, yeah, so we have some automation on this pan. So over here, it is pan right down the middle, right? And then over here, it's pan to the right. Okay, and the reason for that was because the vocal O's that come in here, yeah. that, that doesn't actually make sense because it isn't even present there, but anyway. Oh, no, 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 I'm thinking about the wrong vocal O's track. This is the O's track that I am talking about. This one, right? Actually, no, I'm wrong about that too. So none of these I have bands. I'm not even sure what that is supposed to mean. I just changed the automation of the electric bands two tracks. So sorry about that. It's my bad. I am not perfect. And then we have the volume automation for electric melody track at the end of the song. So this is an important thing. This is again, this is all about. So this one specifically is all about lift and energy because I want you to notice how I want you to notice how, what is the instrument that comes in? What is the sound and the lift that you feel on the 
back half of the final chorus of this song. Listen. So right here. It's that electric guitar track, right? Notice how much louder it is. So that's what's happening earlier on in the song. There's no volume automation needed here, right? We have this. And then here we have this muted part. And then here, notice how, again, I just used a mix tool plugin, just a gain plugin, and then I automated it by 6 dB at the end. So really cranked it. Now I'm going to play this part without that electric guitar and notice the difference. Versus. Not only is it important for that electric guitar track to be there, it is also incredibly important for it to be turned up like it is so that it really cuts through. This stuff is really important and again this is all about energy. This is all about responding to the song as a mixing engineer when you're in this state of mixing. You really don't approach it so much as a math equation or as, you know, dialing in the different tracks in terms of what should sound good based on looks or anything like that. You got to listen to your ears and you got to really feel the song and be like, okay, what is going to feel best? When I listen to this, what feels best? And when I was mixing this and automating this, I just felt like this electric guitar track was getting lost in the mix and I needed to address it. And then when I turned it up by the 6 dB here, like I did, it added the lift. It really hooked me in again to the song. So that is what you need to pay attention to. And not only that, it just adds so much contrast because it's not even present here. And then it comes in and it comes at, an, at a fairly high volume. And it's just such an important detail there at the end of the song. So my friend, one more automation move that I'm going to talk about here. And that is simply, I don't even think this is automation. I just turned down the highs on the kick drum overall because I felt like the kick drum, especially, I just turned down some of the EQ on this kick drum, I believe. I'm not sure where I did it though. I may have done it on the OTT plugin itself. No, I did not do that maybe here on this. Okay, here's probably where I did it. Um, but yeah, cause I think I had this cranked even higher perhaps. And then I just turned it down to like 10 again. And I may have had this cranked as well and then turned it back down. It was just a little bit too much of that sharp kick, high frequency quality popping through. And uh, I just needed to tame that a little bit so that it is a bit more balanced with everything else. And then that is it. So my friend, I hope you found this helpful walking through all of these automation moves. I hope by now you understand why I needed to do all of these moves off camera, not only because it would take so much time to try and keep my focus on both the automation and on the recording of it like I'm doing now, that just ended up being so difficult. So that's why I ended up doing all these moves off camera. And then I did try to take note of almost everything that I did. That way I can still show you after the fact what went down and how it all came together. So my friend, automation, it's such a key skill to learn. And the better you get at it, it you will be amazed at the difference between a song that has bad automation versus a song that has good automation. Songs that have good automation, that is one of the key things that when you hear songs that you really love by artists that you love, one of the reasons you love those songs is because the automation is there. It's keeping the song interesting. It's the song is staying in a has a good sense of balance and equilibrium from start to finish. There aren't these random notes that pop through in an unpleasant way. Everything is in balance relative to everything else, right? So I could just keep going on and on about it, but I'm just going to wrap this video up 
And then that is the end of the automation phase. We have one more step to go in this mixing system. And that is the final step of the mixing system. And that is the thumbs up, thumbs down technique. It's super fun and I can't wait for you to learn it. It is a game changer. So I will see you there.